Hi, and welcome back to the DIY Music Movement Podcast. This is episode 46, Becoming a Genre Expert. So I'm pretty excited about today's episode. We're going to be talking about why it might be in your best interest in the modern music scene, social media, and all those different things to really knuckle down on the history of your own genre and know a lot about it. It can help with producing content, having conversations online, talking to fans, all those kinds of things. So I've put together five reasons to become a genre expert and maybe five ways that you can possibly work towards doing that. And how this came about essentially was because I've looked at people in the past, particularly Dave Grohl, who is a famous example. He just has an amazing knowledge of classic rock and the 70s and 80s punk rock scenes and even pop music from the Beatles through to modern day music. So that's what brought this about. And maybe more specifically in my own genre for my own bands that are progressive rock bands, Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree is basically a world authority on that entire genre. So he just seems to know everything about all the classic prog rock bands. And he gets a lot of press, particularly for that knowledge, as much as he does for his own band's efforts. So that's pretty cool. So I won't keep you too long today. I just wanted to say, firstly, thanks to our sponsor, Audible. If you wanted to get yourself a free audiobook from Audible and support the show, it really, really helps me to pay for all the things that go along with podcasting, web hosting and storage for the audio files and all that stuff. You can go to diymusicmovement.com slash audible. That really helps me and you get a free book to keep regardless if you stay with Audible. So it's a pretty awesome deal. So getting on to our topic for today, five reasons to become a genre expert. As I mentioned earlier, I was going to break it into two sections. So five reasons why you, why you might want to actually do it, and then some ways you can go about accumulating the knowledge to become a quote-unquote industry or genre expert. So we'll go through those quickly. Five reasons to do it. Maybe the most important reason is because it allows you to communicate with your fans and fans of the genre, whether they're from the music press or the music instrument press, guitar magazines, that kind of stuff, down to your day-to-day fan on the street, if you can be seen as someone that knows a lot about the history of the genre, the culture around the genre, and has an appreciation for how fan culture and all those things interact with your choice of music, it can really, really help to generate buzz around your band and also extra press. So that's why you would want to do it. Just to really knuckle down on that point about getting extra press, it's probably the main reason why you would want to do it because it gives you the ability to communicate with multiple forms of press. So one, it allows you to talk to your fans and strangers and industry professionals that you meet about the genre that you're a part of. And number two, it's a chance to get extra press that you might not normally get if you weren't seen as an expert on the genre. Just like Dave Grohl and on in the progressive rock space, Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree, who's a world authority on classic prog rock, and he gets a lot of press just for that reason. So number three, the third reason why you might want to become a genre expert is it allows really fast news jacking. So if you see something in the news or online that you think relates to your genre, you can actually put something out there in the world, whether it's a podcast or a blog or just another post or a comment when you share something on Facebook. And you can actually say things with some authority that people are going to care about. And you can also call people out if you think that something related to your genre has been misconstrued or the media's got something wrong or whatever you're doing if you're pointing someone to a post that you disagree with or something that you do agree with that's around the genre. If you're seen as a genre expert, then that carries a lot more weight with your existing fans. And when people see that, hey, all these people seem to really, really like such and such and his opinion seems to carry weight, it might bring more people into your band's world, which is pretty cool. I know with Stephen Wilson, for example, I know I'm going back to him a lot, but Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth, apologies if I murdered his name then, he would mention Stephen Wilson a lot as someone that would introduced new music to him or whose opinion he agreed with or went to when it came to prog rock in general. And that's what got me into Porcupine Tree. And now I actually like them as a band probably more than I like Opeth. So that can, that's how those transitions can come about if you are a genre expert. One thing, and it's not really commented on, and it's something that maybe just for me personally, you can avoid a lot of genre politics. Certain genres are just full of politics and people trying to be cool and all those sorts of things. If you know a lot about the genre, the history of the genre, and what really, really is genre culture versus not genre culture, you can avoid getting pulled into arguments and conversations online or offline that really don't add to the genre, that might detract from it. And or you can help pull people out of those arguments that might be 
bringing the genre down without actually realizing. So I'm sure everyone out there can think of a certain group of people or a certain genre of music where it seems much more about the peripheral things, the less important things than what it does about the core tenets of the genre, the music and the songs and the sounds in the live show. You can actually help people too and help your fans to avoid getting sucked into those arguments and conversations which might make them enjoy the genre less. You can be kind of a signpost for, hey, we talk about this in the genre but we don't talk about this or that's not cool, we don't want to bring that conversation into our genre or that's going against the history of our genre, all those kinds of things. You can become a signpost for your fans to know that's really, really acceptable and that's not acceptable. Even just things at live shows like what's acceptable behavior, you can become a signpost for that sort of thing if you're seen as a historical expert. On a slightly different tangent and my final point for why you might want to become a genre expert, you are less likely to copy things that are from your own genre without realizing if you are far more aware of the sounds of all the bands that are involved in the genre, particularly historically. You're not going to copy ideas or even melodies or any of that kind of stuff if you're much more familiar with the sounds of all of the bands that you're inspired by, even maybe more so the bands that inspired the bands that you are inspired by. For example, for me, I know not to try to sound too much like Tool and Perfect Circle and Mars Volta and Closure in Moscow and Coheed and Cambria, the bands that inspire me. But it wasn't really until I became aware of the Pink Floyds of the World, Queen, Rush, all those kinds of bands, Genesis, that I really started to feel like I was writing music that was slightly more different because I was actually doing things a lot more like those original bands than I realized I was, even though I was making a conscious effort not to sound like my direct influences. I was actually writing music for a period of time that sounded a lot like their influences, which as I became more of an expert on the genre, which I am by no means an expert on progressive rock, but probably more so than other genres, I know more about it. I'm less likely to copy bands without realizing, which is good to know. You don't want to put music out into the world that sounds like you've ripped off someone from the past. So they're the five reasons why you might want to become a genre expert. It allows greater communication with fans, industry professionals and strangers on the street. You might get extra press and articles if you're an expert on the genre in general. It allows you to newsjack quicker or have a more meaningful comment on news in the genre. It will allow you to avoid genre politics and also help your fans avoid getting sucked up in the genre politics if you're in a genre where there's a lot more talk than there is walk. You can help your fans get out of that cycle. And finally, you can become more creatively aware and not end up copying influences or the influences of your influences. So we'll move on to maybe how you can go about becoming a genre expert. This will be a bit quicker. So this is basically a list of resources where you might look to know more about your genre. And a lot of it's going to go back to that keyword of Google and to just Google things. So one, and probably most important and non-internet related, is just to listen to all of the classic albums of your genre, whether you're really into them or not. Understand what it was about the sounds that maybe made them work, how they've influenced newer bands in your genre, and try and make that connection between, okay, I can see why such and such did this, or where they might have got that influence from. And just become as aware as you can of all of the classic albums of your genre. And if you have time, dig deeper and deeper into those classic catalogues and try and know as much about those bands as you can. Okay, so maybe maybe on to more the Google-related stuff. That's to read key blogs and books and anything you can get hold of online from your actual genre. If you're in a quite big genre like pop or rock or hip-hop or something like that, there probably is actual books that are staples of the genre. You can get hold of those sort of things. But if you're on a smaller genre like progressive rock, for example, there's not a whole lot of books in that genre. But there is a lot of great blogs out there and articles and press pieces from the past that have found their way online. So go check those out. Read them. Try to understand exactly where the music scene was or the genre was at the time in relation to the band, whether they were standing out from the genre, whether they were the leader of the genre, whether they were liked or disliked by fans of other bands in the same genre. Those kinds of things are good to know. You can stream a lot of albums now, obviously. So just Google stream and then find out whatever service you want to be on because some of those older bands aren't on all the services. So I'd normally go to Google first and find out before digging into all the different streaming services where I can actually find some of those classic albums I'm looking for. You need to go and see as many bands as you can, obviously. With really classic bands, obviously that's going to be harder, but if you ever have the chance to go and see them, you should go and see them. And there are even, and this is going to be somewhat 
seen as probably the wrong thing to say. But in the case of like Pink Floyd, for example, there are some really, really professional, you know, arena level tribute bands to Pink Floyd out there. One of them being Australian that are actually world famous in their own right. Even members of Pink Floyd have said they're amazing. So if you ever had the chance to go and see a legitimate show or something inspired by a show, like the Queen stage show or something like that, that's also great stuff that can feed into your knowledge of the genre, how certain bands or musicians or genres produce music that can translate out of the genre in context and maybe into a broader context of culture. You can listen to interviews and podcasts, which is where I get most of my knowledge from, other than reading books and I don't really read so many blogs. If they come in podcast form, I'd prefer audio. So I listen to a lot of interviews, audio books and podcasts. And if you have any extra money laying around and you really are keen to become a genre expert, it might be worth trying to get some industry reports on your exact genre if they're available. So for really, really small genres, that might not be possible. But if you want to know the history of commercial rock or Hades metal or any of those things that are huge genres, classic rock, 80s and 90s hip hop, there's probably industry reports about how all those sort of things are traveling at the moment. So thanks for today. This is episode 46, so for all of the links and the ideas and a recap on everything we've spoken about today, DIYMusicMovement.com slash podcast episode 46. And once again, if you wanted to help out the show and get yourself a 100% free book, my recommendation is Tribes by Seth Godin. It's probably the most important book for people in a band to read, in my opinion. That's DIYMusicMovement.com slash audible, and you can get that for free, and it really helps out the show. So thanks for joining me, and go out there and become a genre expert, and kick some butt. I'll see you in the next episode.